Well, the Tampa Bay Rays are back in action after defeating the San Francisco Giants in a best of three series. Now they'll face the Los Angeles Angels, who have somebody named Shohei Otani and somebody named Mike Trout on the roster. Yes, and it's a fun Friday episode, folks, so you know what that means. Baseball trivia and name that war. So let's get started right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we are the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Rays. You can also find us on the social medias at Locked On Rays. And email us anytime with your uh, mailbag questions, comments, concerns, hot takes, LockedOnRays at gmail.com. Um, before we get into baseball trivia, name that war and previewing the 60 and 62 Los Angeles Angels did want to bring this up. I don't believe there's any update on the Wander Franco news investigation rumor mill since what we discussed yesterday. But related to that, figured we would bring this up and maybe see what uh, the listeners have to say in the YouTube comments and so forth. Who needs to elevate their game or step up the most in his absence on the current roster? So Ulysses figured I would turn it to you to see if you have a guy or two in mind that need to do that. Uh, First of all, let me, let me say that you were right when you said on Thursday's episode, um, when you said nobody should be stepping up. It should just be do your thing. Keep doing you because once you step up or you, 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 you try to, what's that saying? Uh, You try to be a hero, you become a zero. Um, That's true. That's that's probably what's going to happen. So no, I I agree with Maybe the other way to phrase it or frame it is play up to your level of capability, play up to your potential, not do necessarily anything more than you haven't shown or proven to do, but this is where you need to not that you would say this to the guys, but you kind of need this from so-and-so to lock in and be a self that you've been before. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so I, this is a good fun exercise uh, amidst a, a not so fun time, but my guy is a young ball player who in his career has had or had in the past trouble. No, has had, because even into this season, He's had trouble becoming a regular in the lineup and, and and not a lot of trust there and ups and downs. And this season, he's shown that he can be a really good, solid ball player, an everyday player. And that's Isaac Paredes. Um, I, I said this maybe two and a half weeks ago where I said, look, this guy needs to be. I'm, I'm, I, I, I called it my Keppinger moment, my B.A. Keppinger moment. This is it, Kevin Cash. Put Isaac Paredes in the lineup. This guy's a run producer. You need to have this guy in the lineup every day. Unless he's hurting, he needs to be in the lineup. He is a threat. They're going to pitch to people differently if uh, in front of him, behind him, whatever. He can be that guy too. And when you look at his season split, it's been very, very nice um, what he's done. Uh, WRC plus wise from March and April, 123. May, 135. June 165, July 177. Now, this is why he is my guy for this uh, exercise. August 89. Isak, you're not an 89 WRC plus guy. You're not. You've shown us that the whole year you've been, uh, the, the worst month was 123. So I need him if we want to say step up to step up, but it's really like play to your caliber. And I know that some of it, has to do with the BABIP um, in the second half. Mm-hmm. The second half BABIP is a 197 compared to a 277 in the first half. So maybe a little bit of, of hard luck there that he's running into. But regardless, I, I he's my guy. And maybe hitting, because he's getting up to the point of he will surpass more games than he's ever played 
in a major league season, then we know what happens when you get to the dog days of August and you're a younger player. You sometimes hit that wall and uh, have trouble just finding not necessarily that focus, but just, man, it's a grind. It is not an easy thing to do by any means. Uh, Related to that, I love just throwing questions out like this. So he has 23 homers, 71 RBI. I'm not going to touch the RBI, but homers, any chance or not any chance, because there's always a chance, I presume. Will he get to the magic 3-0, 30 bombs this year? Let's say they got 39 games left. Um, 39 games left. He would need seven more. That'd be like one home run every like 5.3 days, 5.2 days. That's and that assumes you play every day. And that's assuming that he plays every day. Which, by the way, Kevin Cash, I know you're a fan. You should put him in the lineup every day. Um, hmm, I'm going to say no, but I want to say yes, but it's, it's, it's a no. Hopefully 25. It'd be nice if he got to the yes. 2-5 number. Um, a guy I'm going to put forth, and um, obviously he uh, has drawn mixed opinions of late across the fan base, Brandon Lau. You need Brandon Lau to be healthy you need brandon loud to not be slumping you need brandon loud to have a veteran aura and presence and uplift whoever's playing shortstop i.e oslave spasabe you need brandon Lau if and when you get into the playoffs to hopefully figure things out at that point in time and i know that uh he's uh I guess struggled the last seven games. He's batting 185, 267 on base, 296 slug. Now his last 15 games, the line is 250, 333, 518. Last 30 games is 238, 330, 475. So I would love, love to see Brandon Lau have an OPS of the ballpark around 850. Kind of, again, bring your game to what we've, been used to seeing and i think we're starting to see some of that with the approach there's some positive signs from brandon lau he is drawing walks he is staying back on spinners he's driving spinners he's driving balls up the middle a little bit more frequently than we've seen before i think overall if you notice some of his at bats um when he's doing well and doing hot he's shortening his swing and there's not much wasted movement from stance to bat head to making contact with the ball. But I think that up the middle approach in staying back and, you know, not getting caught off guard or fooled on, you know, a, a change up down in the zone or something and doing the, the other things. I know everybody, we, we love to talk about the home runs with Brandon Lau. We mentioned he got his hundredth career home run in a raised uniform, which is a magical feat for sure. But even doing the little things of, you know, draw that extra walk or get that RBI single that ties the game or gets the game closer or puts the raise ahead. So, you know, more of those momentum changing moments would be great from Brandon Lau. And uh, I mentioned this, you know, stay healthy, be a veteran, uh, be positive, don't be slumping. And also defensively play up to your capabilities because I, I just think that you need to help everybody up the middle. Um, we know yeah. the the shakiness of the catcher position defensively. We know the shakiness of putting a rookie shortstop out there. So if there's anything Brandon Lau can do to make the plays that he needs and is supposed to make, you got to do it. Yeah, no, 100%. I, I, I want to ask you something. WRC plus. 114, 127, 151, 137, 104 last year, 111 so far. Is he going to keep that 104 his career low? It, so are you saying that he would hit lower than 104? Will he? For his career? No, no, not his season. career, but like, is that going to be his worst year, WRC plus wise, 104? And that was, I'm just trying to find which year. Last that year, was. 2022. Um, so we're like fast forwarding 10 years from now. That'll, 
Well, it's weird because I think there could be a shaky situation where, you know, in his final year, you know, he might play 40, 50 games. He has that swan, you know, the, it, where he just doesn't, everybody seemingly has that, that year where it's just like, okay, father time is caught up to you and you just don't have it anymore. But generally I think that probably, I mean, if we're just talking about prime of his career right now for the next five seasons, I would think and hope that that would be his his lowest WRC plus. Or OPS I am, plus. what'd you say? I I'm doubting. I get, I get the doubting. numbers mixed up. Yeah, no, I'm doubting, but uh, I think we have to say something before we keep telling you why I'm doubting about something. Okay, else. yeah, we can do that. Uh, we have to tell you something very important, and that is this: Do you want the chance to win more money with less picks? Of course you do. So you need to head over to Sleeper, the number one sports app, where you can win up to a hundred times your money on just two or more fantasy baseball picks. Sleeper is a fantasy sports and real money gaming app focused on bringing people together through sports and gaming. With Sleeper, you can swing for the fences with up to 100 times payouts. All you have to do is choose two or more categories, or two or more players, I should say, that you like and select more or less based on their stat categories like home runs, strikeouts, hits, and so much more. If you get your picks right, you could win B-I-G big. So use promo code Locked On L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, and you'll get up to a $100 match on your very first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Remember that. That's important, depending where you live. So check out Sleeper today. All right. Here comes the Brandon Lau hate. Bring it to us. <laughs> no, it's just a question. Because when you look at the slugging, 433 this year, it's his slowest except for 2022 when we had the back problem. When you look at the WRC Plus, it's 111, the second worst that he's had since um, uh, since last year. The K rate, it's the second worst he's ever had uh, at 28.4%. I'm getting worried that maybe – have we seen the best of Brendan Lau? It's possible. Again, it, it happens uh, – not all careers are – linear and picture perfect in the sense of oh my gosh this guy's gonna have a 10 12 year career he's gonna be consistent all through it one bad injury or two can you know make a guy's father time much sooner at 28 29 years old compared to 33 34 35 years old so i i get what you're saying and i hear you and it does seem like his um I mean, the everything is depreciating in value to some extent. I'm just saying on the field recently, besides the last seven games, there are some good signs. And it just could be a case of that lingering back issue. It, it might just take a, a true off season to really get right and get back in the mold. Um, so I'm willing to kind of wait and see on that. But I don't think we're ever going to see. Look, the 2021, that was his career year. You're never yeah. seeing that happen again you're never seeing that yeah. i think going forward you know the average brand in laos season i mean you you should be ecstatic if it's you know at 820 830 ops i'm just throwing numbers out here yeah, yeah. uh he gives you a, a 130 140 games and you know 22 to 28 bombs something like that like don't be expecting 2021 as the norm um I think you because have to again, say that like louder. The, the health is a huge factor. That's the only season that he's played in more than a hundred games. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I, I know the twenty twenty one was sixty, and he played fifty six. So okay, fine. But point still stands. But I need you to say that louder. Twenty twenty one is his career year because I feel like a lot of people are now putting that expectation on him to just be the twenty twenty one guy. Like sometimes, sometimes careers career years are going to happen early yeah. and and that was and, and that was the peak and then so you're you as a fan you might get frustrated trying uh to root for the guy to be that person that he was two three years ago and that's just unfair like that's it it's a career year for a reason everything right. went right health mental health physical health mental health emotional health your swing was right um 
you know, you had good uh, a good support system in the clubhouse, outside the clubhouse. Everything yeah. w- was going right, you know? And conversely, it could be a case of where Brandon Lau has that 2021. He's never going to match that again. I'm going to put that on the record. I mean, that. how often do you see second baseman hit 39 home runs? How often do you see anybody not named Shohei Otani and a handful of others mm-hmm. hit 39 home runs? But it's also interesting to see a guy like Randy who has yet to pop off and have that quote unquote career year, but damn, he's been consistent the last three years. You can pretty much check Mark that what the, the average is going to be ballpark what the on base percentage, what the OPS, the home runs, the stolen bases. Um, you can pretty much chalk him in for, he's going to get you, you know, 20 home runs and a, you know, 780 to 815 OPS. That That's pretty much what it's been the last three years. So um, he's yet to really have that big, where's that, you know, 34 home run season. I don't know if it's ever going to come, but there is something to be said about having that model of consistency year in and year out for a guy like Randy, who uh, again was deserving of that first all-star appearance. But I just wanted to throw that out as well. Yeah. I, I know. I thank you for for doing that. And I have a question for you. I, you know, for Randy, it's been okay. He's a 2020 guy. You know, uh, this season he has 18 home runs and 15 stolen bases, and we've got 39 games to go. So obviously, the question is, does he hit two more home runs? Does he get five more bags? Yes, because I think those numbers and those 2020. I think having those feats are important to him yeah. in the Rays. So I think by hook or by crook, he will get to that marker. It could be the last game of the season and he's three stolen bases away. Damn it. He's going to be running every time. Verde, Verde, <laughs> Verde. That's what he's going to have. So I think definitely he'll get the home runs, the stolen bases. He's going to run until he gets those stolen bases when the the moment is right. And who knows, maybe without uh, Wander Franco in the fold that allows him to, to settle in and, and, be a little bit more jovial and enjoy himself a little bit more and, and hmm. go from there. So I'm glad you brought that up uh, as well. It might, you know, the stolen bases may come with a few more caught stealings and the home runs or uh, trying to go after those home runs might come with a few more strikeouts. But um, yeah, he's been a, a 2020 player the last two seasons. He is definitely assuming he stays healthy and on the field. He wants to be a 2020 player three times in a row. It's happening. Agreed. Agreed with you. I think he, that matters to him. Like he knows how many he has. And so he's yeah. going to go for it a thousand percent. And I want to hear what you guys have to say on the YouTube comments. Who is the person that you're choosing that quote unquote needs to step up or at least play to their caliber uh, throughout this uh, Wander Franco less time? I want to hear you guys in the comments and yeah. and, and and we'll we'll reply back. Um. I don't know if we really have time or the wherewithal or the want to go into a full angels preview, but I'll just mention this. Um, I guess in one sense, it's good that the Rays will not be seeing Shohei Otani on the mound. On the other sense, I'm a little bit bummed up, uh, bummed out as a baseball fan of not being able to see him yeah. on the mound. I want to see the splitter. I want to see the sweeper. I want to see the curve. I want to see the fastball. I want to see all of that. Certainly we're going to see him at the plate. And it got me thinking a little bit with Shohei Otani again, just, Bringing this up, total pie in the sky, just like it was a couple months ago with the, uh, hey, what are the, the what are the Rays going to do to acquire Shohei Otani at the trade deadline? I know this is not happening. There is a zero point zero 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 one percent chance of this happening, but I'm going to bring it up regardless. Wander Franco, if that contract is null and void, that's a lot of money that the Rays could seemingly play with. I'm just throwing it out there. Shohei Otani is going to be a free agent. Give him a three-year, $180 million deal. Give him a four-year, $200 million deal. That can help salvage and remove the stench, the stink, the nastiness of the whole Wander Franco storyline. Wander who? We got Shohei Otani. It was basically uh, a Wander Franco, more than a Wander Franco. He's you know, uh, bring out the best hitter in baseball and uh, Shane McClanahan all rolled into one. It's it's the most talented human to have ever played the game of baseball. Facts. The most talented human because nobody has ever in, in an age where you've got sliders at 93 miles an hour. Don't and, and and without being segregated ball, 
this guy's doing something that has never been done before. So yeah, most talented player. I look, it's fun. We know we all know it's not gonna happen, but it's always fun to talk about that stuff yeah. because you know it's it's the most talented player. So you always you know, I do like the Photoshop skills that you see in anti-social media with uh, Shohei like, in, um, in the Devil Rays jersey. I don't know who did it, but it was it was nice. And he was at the trop. It was it was like, bam, imagine what could be. That's really nice. Um, like you, bummed out that we're not going to see him regarding the contract. That I would I would play along way more if that contract hadn't been, been so backloaded. If if if, right, Wanda, if if Wonder was already making like 15, 18, maybe 20, I'd be like, okay, okay, I can see that. But the fact that, you know, he wasn't going to be making hey, 20 trade, until like Trade Tyler now. Glass now, trade Manny Margot, that's $35 million for you. That's 35. 35 I, right there. Hey, I'm just bringing it up. I know people will attack me, but we're just having a little fun here. Speaking of which, and I don't know if anybody can hear uh, Perry barking out there. He's, he's, I know you want Shoei, but you know, we have to be realistic at the end of the day. Yeah. Come on, Perry, yeah. let's relax here. Um, so here's the thing with Shoei I know the, the pitching prowess, the power prowess, the just everything that surrounds him is the speed. amazing. He's not, yeah, he's not only People the, don't most talk talented. about his speed, man. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what I wanted to get to. I guarantee over the course of this three game series, he will leg out an infield single. He is very, very talented and has a great knack for doing that and stealing bases too. He has 17 stolen bases and he picks his spot really well. So besides the, you know, 430 foot home runs and the 380 foot flyouts and hitting the hardest ball that we've seen this season at 118, 119 miles per hour and pitchers trying to jam him in doesn't work because he can muscle anything in and out. You can't pitch him away because he has the plate coverage to take and move that bat and the length to move that bat and push something out there. So again, he's a wonder can no, no doubt about it, but just focus on the little things with Shoei besides the highlight reel stuff. Yeah just how he can leg out an infield single, whether it's to the first base side or the third base side or up the middle and, you know, picking his spots to, to steal second, sometimes an errant throw that uh, could happen with Renee Pinto or Christian Bethencourt. And then he finds his way to third. Yeah. Running the bases first, to third, uh, first to home maybe. So yeah, hopefully we don't get to see too much of that uh, unless it's Shohei, unless it's yes. Shohei, I will take, you know, it's, I think Shohei for me has reached the point of like Venezuelan bump status. Like basically I don't care. <laughs> it's a joy to watch you play. It's a joy to watch you play. So uh, hopefully we get to see that. Okay. It wasn't a Los Angeles, uh, Angeles angels preview, but it was a Shohei Otani preview. So uh, that's I all that matters say, at the end of the day. Look, they went for it. They got some pieces, a Giolito and company, and then they started losing and that sucks uh for them and for that fan base they 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 they, they went onto the gambling uh the, the craps table and they did not find themselves happy at the end of the day no just losing streak did not help them and and so that's it that's it they're they're a not they're a non-competitive team right now for this season so hopefully the rays are able to take the series and then you can have a really nice trip back uh having gone four and two in this chaotic last week or so that the Rays have had yeah and then we'll find out Monday, uh, I guess an update on what's going to happen with Wander with the restricted list, I guess, expiring or temporarily expiring right. or has to be extended. I don't know all the uh, nuts and bolts with all that, but um, yeah. I'm sure we'll have an update by then. All right. Uh, baseball trivia and name that war Ulysses. You have baseball trivia. What do you got? Since 2011, the Los Angeles Angels uh, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, the California Angels, however you want to call them. Um, since 2011, they've had 11 players not named Shoei Otani or Mike Trout be an all-star. Since 2011, they've had 11 players not named Shoei Otani or Mike Trout be an all-star. Out of those 11, can you name me five? Five... Angels players not named Trout or Otani who have been an All Star. Um, Patrick Sandoval. 
strike one. Wow. Okay. I was trying to go off the deep end a little bit with that one. Oof. Man, that's kind of all we've talked about the last 12 years plus uh, is Mike Trout. Oh, my gosh. This is a great, great trivia question. I'm going to say, oh, shot in the dark, Howie Kendrick. Howie Kendrick is correct. 2011. Wow. Nice. Four more, Bob. Four more. Rysel Iglesias. Strike two. No way. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. You got to protect now. Got to protect the strike zone. Come on. I don't know how I protect big. because the Angels have been so crummy. But, all right, uh, he's had to be an all-star at one point, uh, even if he didn't deserve it in this uniform. Albert Pujols. There you go. 2015. Oh, man, I'm struggling. Three All more. Right. I, another shot in the dark. I don't know why I'm thinking of these random names. I want to go with a pitcher, but I can't think of Can I help you out a little bit? Do you, sure. do you want help? I need 20, help. 2023. Two were all-stars in 2023? I don't even Because <laughs> I was not focusing on the Angels. It certainly wasn't Owen, Anthony Rendon. Owen France gave us a voice memo and he talked specifically about uh, this guy yeah i know you're talking about it. i don't remember his name reliever basically yep. a offensive lineman yes all right can't think of his name out of sight out of mind um okay. kendris morales strike three damn we were looking for the following names carlos estevez Jared Walsh, Tommy LaStella, Hector Santiago, Eric Ibar, Mark Trumbo, Jared Weaver, CJ Wilson, and Jordan Walden. That is the most sorry list of all stars I've ever it's, heard. It's I'll very bad. Weaver. That sounds very. Somebody from the Angels, not named Mike Trout, has to be an all-star when he's injured or doesn't want to show up, so we got to pick somebody. That is the yeah. most depressing list. Not that's great. all you could come up with. Not you, but that's all the Angels could come up with since 2011. Not great. That's insane. Doesn't that just talk a little bit about who they've been the last 12 or so seasons? I know they went to the playoffs in 2014. People don't get at me. I'm just saying. Holy cow okay i know okay there you I go i mean yeah don't put all your eggs into one or two baskets there it's baseball nope. it's not basketball um or golf <laughs> or tennis i guess <laughs> singles doubles takes more than that holy <laughs> cow all right uh my guy and i'll give you a little hint here for uh name that war uh also in angels I guess an angel's great. You could go that far um, and made multiple all-stars in an angel's uniform. A little bit more name recognition. Perry, shut up over there. Um, Darren Erstad, what is his career war? Wow. Say the name one more time. Darren Erstad. Darren Erstad. 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 Wow. Yeah. Growing up, I remember him. He was like the Angels uh, X team from the Cardinals. Essentially. Gonna go with 24 war. Okay. Quick um, off the hip. Darren Erstad, according to baseball reference, uh, Hit, well, two-time All-Star, won a World Series in 2002, three-time Gold Glover, outfielder and first baseman, 282 career batting average, 124 career homers, um, 699 RBI, 316 doubles, mm. once had 240 hits in a season. That was in 2000. 
Wow. That's How many total hits did he get? 1,697. Wow. Uh, I think, um, yeah, there I were a him. couple years where injuries really got the best of him. Um, but basically between 97 to 2002, he was dynamite. Um, his career war, good guess, 32.3, the pride of Jamestown, North Dakota. Not upset about it. Not upset about it. Eight, eight away, but it was yeah. quick off the hip. I'm okay with it. Uh, he had one season where he hit more than 20 home runs, and that was that 2000 season where he had the 240 hits. He had 25 homers and 100 RBI. The only year that he had 100 RBI, of course, playing in the steroid era, um, probably yep. didn't get as much attention or love as you know some of the other big boppers. But I, that's kind of what I, I mean, I mean, a little look. optimistic, but kind of what I was envisioning for like a a Kyle Manzardo. Uh, I mean, the war's, I think, more high than Manzardo will finish with. But, you know, have a 282 career batting average and maybe a few more home runs, but kind of in that that ballpark-esque. Yeah, no, I I, I think Manzardo's going to be a really good player. And it's going to sting a little bit. But just know the need was the pitching. The need was the pitching. That is true. All right. Uh, Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe. And we will talk to you next week. 